All right. Well, good day to you, whatever day it is that you're watching uh, this video. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today. Welcome to WFBC, as in Friendship Baptist Church. Uh, I've got some guests with me today, Patty and Don, and I'll introduce them to you in just a second here. But uh, we've been going through in our uh, recent uh, recorded ABF series uh, issues on growing and changing as believers, as well as uh, issues related to counseling and disciple making. Uh, certainly has a counseling flavor uh, to the study. And uh, Patty and Don had a, the opportunity a couple of months ago uh, to go up to Indiana to a, a conference, a week-long training conference on counseling. And so we wanted to get uh, some of their takeaways and, and observations from that and share those with you uh, here today. And so uh, let me introduce them to you. Patty, first of all, uh, Patty Somer, if you don't know her, uh, she is on the leadership team at Friendship Christian School here as our, a part of our ministry. Uh, she has shepherded five young men, and they're becoming men now, uh, and done a great job with that. She uh, really daily basis, on a daily basis, she interacts and uh, encourages teachers and educators, as well as uh, mentors, listens to, uh, prays with uh, young teenage girls in particular, um, and just does a great job with all of that. She's been involved with disciple making with adults as well, and uh, she is just a strong, um, smart and very compassionate, uh, wonderful lady, and I look forward to getting her uh, takes from uh, the conference. This is Don Robbins. Uh, Don, uh, I would say, has a very unusually big heart, big gift uh, for just counseling and disciple making with the young kids, especially and teenagers. They just gravitate to her. Uh, her job is uh, has her as a part of the school faculty here at Friendship Christian School. Uh, she is also a part of the a church uh, student ministry youth staff, and again, she just has teens that come to her quite, quite often uh, with th things to talk about and just appreciate uh, her ministry. So good to have both of you guys. Are we doing okay today? Doing yeah, great. Thanks for having us. Well, good. Well, Patty, since the uh, life-changing events of March of this year, 2020, uh, what have you been up to? Most recently, we've enjoyed our rides on the trail. As you guys know, John likes to bike ride, and so... I've learned to like bike riding as well. And so we've been taking a lots of rides on the trail and, and just enjoying creation and so forth. Uh, but also just a time of that we've had a stay home to introspect, think about your priorities as a family. And uh, I'm really grateful for that opportunity that I probably wouldn't have had if we hadn't been at home. Sure. So yeah, that's kind of what we've been up to. And now we're looking forward to taking a trip up to uh, Chicago and then to Wisconsin to go see my sister, spend some time up there. So yeah, we're looking at getting out for a little bit. I've been to that part of the country many times, and this is a good time of year to go to Wisconsin. Yes. It sure beats January. So. Yes, for <laughs> sure. I'm sure you'll have a great time there. Don, how about you? What, what have you been doing since uh, March here? Well, homeschooling my boys again. Well, <laughs> virtual learning, Back to homeschool. as we call yeah. it. So it was pretty consumed with that for a while. When that ended, we took a trip to Florida to see my in-laws. And then um, I recently took a trip to San Antonio to see my mom and sister. And that was a lot of fun and all her kids. So mostly just I'm enjoying family time that kind of like Patty said, just God stopping you and you have nothing to do but look at your family and say, hey, what are we going to do today? <laughs> uh, good stuff. And for those who like to travel, I'll just tell you that Dom was underwhelmed by the Alamo in San Antonio. So just, just throwing that out there as a uh, unimportant point. All right. So, well, good. We'll get into it here then. Thanks for your time once again. And uh, what I mean by that, a little more than would have expected here. Uh, inside joke, I guess you might say. But um, again, uh, Don and Patty had the chance in February to go up to Indiana to a week-long uh, intensive counseling training uh, conference up there. Just wanted to hear a little bit about that from them. And so we'll start with you, Don. How, how did this kind of come together for you guys to go? Um, I work in the cafeteria here. So I see just about every student come through during the day. And I have the opportunity to watch them and listen. And there are a few that uh, tell me things. And I feel like the weight of issues that they have now are just heavy. And they have to deal with more at a younger age. And I felt inadequate, like I wasn't equipped to help them where they are right now. And I was praying about it and asking God, you know, where, how can I help more? I don't feel like I'm educated enough to 
help them where they are. So I thought, well, and then God brought to my mind Patty. She's amazing. And I thought, why don't I go ask her? She does this every day. So I went into her office and just laid my heart out to her. And she asked me, if there was anything that you could do, what would it be? If you could go back to school or be trained in anything, what would it be? And I thought, the school needs counselors. I feel like the church needs counselors. So what do you think, Patty? <laughs> so when she brought it up, um, we had just had a little bit of a conversation about it. And the Lord brought to mind that a friend of mine many years ago, about 15 years ago, had gone to a conference up in Indiana. And when she came back, she was just overflowing with joy talking about it. And I remember at that point saying, I'm going to go to that conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but as my kids were really little, the timing didn't work out. You're gone for an entire week. And I didn't feel like when I had toddlers around, that would be a great time to be gone. And so the timing just didn't work out and didn't work out. And then as Dawn was sitting there in my office, the little light bulb went off. Mm -hmm. And the Lord brought it back to mind again, fresh and anew, that he had to check into that conference. So the remarkable part of this where God works, again, is that this was in January that we're having this conversation. And I remembered that the conference only met one time during the year for one week. And I thought it was in February, but I wasn't sure. And as she was talking, I was thinking, there is no way if it's in February that we're going to be able to go to this conference, but let's check it out. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And then this year, perhaps in previous years as well, they opened up a simulcast room. So we were able to actually get into the conference and all of our arrangements lined up for the hotel and everything just worked like clockwork. God's hand was, was completely in it. And um, so it was not very many weeks after this conversation began that we were zooming up to Indiana to have a life-changing week, really. Did you all get along okay that week, or was it, were there issues? <laughs> Pretty sure you want to recognize this that week. <laughs> Pretty sure. Oh, very, very good. So almost like maybe, would you agree that God is in control and maybe wanted you to go to this conference potentially? No doubt. Oh, very I'd cool. say no doubt. It's solidified in my mind that she is indeed amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if there was God any doubt, amazing. we decided, right? Yes. Oh, good stuff. Well, good. Well, for this segment here, we'd, we'd like to hear some of your takeaways from uh, from the conference. And so we'll just kind of go back and forth a little bit. But Patty, what would you say were some of your, or one of your biggest takeaways from your time up there in Indiana? For sure, uh, the, the one word that kept coming back and forth to both of us was the word hope. Mm -hmm. When a, a student or a, a young lady or a, a grown lady or anyone comes to you and wants advice, a lot of times they have come to the end of their rope and they don't know what to do now and they mm -hmm. need some guidance and direction. And a lot of times they've lost hope for the situation, whether it be a broken marriage, whether it be decisions they've made that fell into a ditch, so to speak, whatever it might be, they feel like they, they don't know where to turn and they need some hope. And that example was given to us over and over again that we can be the ones to share that hope. We can mm. open God's word with them. And through a matter of listening, counseling, and, and working through these situations, offer them hope that they so desperately need. So I would say for sure, the number one thing we that I took away from it uh, was hope. And within that hope, making connection to them as, as an individual, finding the common ground with them so that they can see that you know, you've made it through circumstances like this or you're aware of those who have. And again, it's the hope being offered there. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. You want to want to go with that thought a little bit, Don, as far as takeaways for you? I agree. Number one is hope. Hope in any situation, no matter who you are, where you come from, your past, where your future is going, there is hope, but that hope is in Christ. Mm -hmm. And all the whole conference was pointed on the hope you have in Christ. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I went looking for help in how to help others. And instead, God showed me the huge beam in my own eye that I needed to have that hope myself for things that have happened in the past for me or what I'm holding on to right now. It was very convicting sitting there. I felt like slinking under the table or in my seat most of the time mm -hmm. just from the truths that were you were faced with daily about do you really hope in Christ on a daily basis? And it was life-changing new perspective for me. Mm -hmm. I came back with a completely new perspective on God's Word and how it can help you no matter what you're going through, that there's hope on the other side of this situation that you find yourself in. Let me ask you this. You, you both mentioned that was a big takeaway. As, as somebody who is discipling or even parenting or shepherding, counseling, 
why would you say, what is the source of that? Why did that stick out, the idea of hope, as far as helping somebody through their issues and things? What do we? <laughs> I, I'd say, I would say partly it's just because they don't seem to have it. They come in with okay. despair. They look sad. Their eyes are down. Their countenance is down. You can tell when they walk in the door, they feel like they've been beaten. Right. A lot of times they've been beaten up by themselves over sure. situations, whether from the past or whatever. And I think they communicated that really well in the conference. It's just the idea of a lot of times that is the number one thing you've got to go over first, is right. giving them some hope right, right. to address the, the ideas. Is that what you'd say, too? Um, I would also include that, for me, being raised in a church, and you always hear you need to read the Bible, you need to pray, you need to just trust God more, it gives you the hope that where to find it in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Not just go read it, but here's where you can find it. Mm -hmm. Here you can, you can be the guide to um, the map of the Bible mm -hmm. on where you can find it. There's hope. Let me show you where it is. That was my biggest sure. takeaway with that. If people come in, like she said, but there is hope, and let me show you where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, good stuff. I'll just, you know, my own experience, my own training as well, I, I, I echo what you guys were saying in the sense of uh, something sticks out in my own mind that when somebody comes to you looking for help, the first step, the first thing you want to give them is hope. I remember somebody once seen saying that, you know, if somebody does not have any, you know, the idea is if you don't have any, well, then lean on mine for a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I, this may come up again later, I forget, you know, as far as our discussion, but uh, one of the first verses I go to is 1 Corinthians ten thirteen, where it says that God is faithful and that nothing you're encountering is, is not already common to men and women in humanity, and God will make a way of escape as a believer. Um, and you can bear that situation. So, and that is so uh, true. Because they, we all do have times when we think we're the only one going through whatever right. circumstances, and we may not even share it with our, our spouses, our families, or whoever. We may feel like we're the only one. And I feel stupid even bringing this up. Right. And then you realize that verse is true for me, like it is for anyone else. That there is nothing that's happened that's first time ever seen before. This is a, a common battle that we're all, you know, battling together. Hmm. Well, let's continue on as far as takeaways. So, Patty, another takeaway you took from the conference in Indiana there. So, they took us all the way back to the garden, and one of the very first counseling sessions ever, after Adam and Eve, well, <laughs> let's just go call that the very first counseling session, as far as we know, first recorded one, when Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, and they knew they had done wrong. And when God was going to approach them, what was the first thing he did? Well, he asked questions. He didn't make a statement. He didn't tell them what they should have done. He didn't try to wrap up the whole entire situation in a 30-minute conversation and move on to something else. He asked questions to get them to recognize what their issues were. And I think that was something I learned is you're not going to solve someone's problem they've been brewing over for, it could be months, could be years, who knows how long. You're not going to come in 30 minutes and all of a sudden, wham, problem's gone, solved, and out the door you go. You ask a lot of questions and figure out what was going on in their lives. Get their backstory. Show that you care about them, that you want to hear from them, that you're willing to listen to what they have to say. So to me, that was really insightful. A lot of times I find myself thinking, I only have 45 minutes with a student where they have to go back to next class. We have to resolve this in 45 minutes. That's just not even realistic. It's just not going to happen. Right. And so making a commitment, a long-term commitment with somebody to to work through the problem was, was very helpful to me. And a couple of the things that they brought out over and over again is one question is, what do I want so badly that I'm willing to sin to get it? Mm. It's a great question to all of us to ask ourselves. And then coming face to face with ideas, I do what I do because I want what I want. So right. what it is that I want so badly that I'm doing this behavior? And just a couple of thoughts that they mentioned, I don't know how many times, but kept coming over and over again. And I thought, you know, that's so true. If we would just each ask ourselves that before we go to meet with them. Right. Yeah, it's a great point. You, you, you mentioned there that, you know, God is one of the better counselors out there probably, wouldn't you say? You I know, would agree. The best. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He's probably the best. Yes. Probably. He's the he best one. The best. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um, and yeah, interesting point that even with Adam and Eve, he began with questions, you know, mm -hmm. and certainly something for us to... Yeah, that's a great point. We're not going to solve somebody's problems that they've had for years in 30 minutes. Nope. We have to take the time but to hear the story and absorb and so forth. Right. Great, great, great point. Good takeaway. Don, over to you. Well, along those lines and um, listening, that 
what you said, they come in, but are you listening or are you thinking about what you want to tell them? Mm. You know, does my opinion really matter? Do I stop in that moment and listen to their story without my mind turning on what I'm going to respond with? Right. And asking the questions and getting them to reveal more and more, earning that trust with discipleship is that we're doing life together mm -hmm. and let me help you. And there are struggles that I have that, you, that I could help you with or maybe you don't want to hear my opinion. Just mm -hmm. talk to me. Let's let's talk this through. Let me listen to you. And it doesn't matter if I, how I think about it, but let's see what Christ thinks about this. And I feel like that was more important. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't think about myself. Talking to my, but... Um, what does God think about this? Right, right. So listen. Listen. <laughs> An important one. Yeah, yes. A verse that I've come across often recently is that James 1 verse that says, let every man be quick to hear, you know, quick to listen. Slow to speak, slow to anger, but quick to listen. Sometimes you have to remind yourself in that moment, don't say anything. Like yeah. You think to yourself, don't say anything yet. Yes. No. Ask the <laughs> questions to reveal more of the story, and you want to hear their heart about mm. their situation. Uh, to you, to you men that are out there listening, listening and watching this video, that's great advice. We love to solve problems, don't we? <laughs> we just want to solve it, to get it done, get get on to the next thing. Yeah, great, great, great uh, encouragement to listen. Good, Patty, tennis ball, back over to you. Okay, take away. All right, so go after the heart. Every time, go after the heart and try to reach that person that way um, by talking to them, listening to them and seeing from the Bible what he has to say, what God's Word has to say. And Don has mentioned before just the value of prayer and just diving into your prayer life with them and doing doing life with them, yes, but realizing that God's going to do something in them that you cannot do. Mm -hmm. and there's nothing we can do or say, but you can pray that the Lord will work on their hearts to be receptive to whatever His Word has guided them to be, whatever that decision might be. And so I would definitely say one of the things that we talked about a lot was going after the heart and making sure that they know uh, the truth and that you love them through the truth. Hmm. Uh, again, great, great observation, I think. And I think what you're pointing to with prayer is that we're, we're dependent on God entirely. We can't, none of us can change a heart. Can't make it happen. Um, yeah, and the Bible says the heart's deceitful, uh, even our own. Mm -hmm. But uh, a great observation, good. Don, back over to you. Well, on that, um, I kept coming back to the same verse, Hebrews 4.12, that ultimately mm -hmm. God is the discerner of our thoughts and the intents of our heart. We can't see their heart, but God can. And my own heart, the Lord only knows. So we have to trust Him that He will discern their thoughts and their intents. And if, they, if someone truly wants help, then maybe that's why they're coming to a biblical counselor, that they've tried everything else, and now they want to hear what God says about it. Yeah, I mean, would you guys say that what, what you just said there is a big source back to the original takeaway of, of the hope, right? right. Mm -hmm. You know, God and the Word of God being involved with it. God is the one working, well, not working with it, we're working with Him, really, as far as seeing God change and grow people and so forth. Uh, good stuff. Patty, over to you. So when a counselee comes to you, or, or a friend coming for advice, you're going to be communicating. And so one of the things they talked about were the four key rules of communication, just being careful with, with what you say and how you say it, and being honest was one of them. It's interesting, at one point, one of the days they said that don't expect your counselor to come to you with the truth necessarily the first time, mm. or at least not the whole truth. And, you know, the reason for that is we all have our pride, you know, we don't want to lay everything out there for someone to know how, how deeply we are struggling with a particular situation, but um, we on our side are to be honest with them, speaking the truth in love. Um, being current with what's been going on in that person's life, making sure that you're not disengaged with them and that you're actually staying involved with them. Attacking the problem and not the person. If it's somebody you care about and you love, you, you don't think that you're going to do that, but being careful to not use words like you, 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 or right. just being real careful on how you address them and talk to them so they don't feel like they're being attacked. I imagine if they do, they might talk to you once. <laughs> might never come back. So, so much for having life with them. Right. Um, and then making sure that you're acting and not reacting to situations. Some of that's being proactive. Um, but it's also just understanding that uh, they're, they're bearing their heart to you and they, they need you to be able to absorb it and not 
you know, fly off the handle about something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so being able to act with them and not react and helping them to learn how to do the same. Yeah, I'll just tell you that are watching, Patty just gave an exposition of Ephesians 4, 25 to 32. <laughs> and, uh, great, you know, I, I, I think I've told you guys this, but I, I've done a number of, um, of sessions of pre-marriage counseling, and that's one of the, I've taught that very outline, you know, in marriage, it's not if you're going to have conflict, it's when. And really, the, the success of a marriage is going to be dependent on how you deal with conflict in your life. Mm-hmm. And those rules are just, just so great. The, I, I remember the illustration of the third one you mentioned about attacking problems, not people, where it's not me against my wife or me against a person. They're the problem or I'm the problem. It's us sitting side by side facing the problem, mm-hmm. you know, not using words like always or never, which right. attack people. Sure. You always, that's an attack on character, whereas, no, the problem was this situation right here. Anyway, great, great stuff. That could be a whole, whole other conversation, uh, another conversation <laughs> that we'll sure. have another time, right? But mm-hmm. uh, great, great. Thanks for sharing that, that outline there. Great, great stuff. Don, over to you. Another takeaway from you? I don't, uh, I'm trying to think of another one, but she seems to be covering it really well. There's one more point that you have I think you should... Which one is found that? upon? Is it this one here? The four fools? Yeah. Did you just do that? Yeah. Did you? I did. <laughs> <laughs> that awkward moment. <laughs> Deep impression on Dawn there. It looks like. <laughs> Were you not listening? I was, I was thinking she about did say. she say the, about being honest? About, oh, I, I think that was thinking about that. I'm doing the one thing I said not to do, thinking about what you're going to say while the other person is talking. Study. It's a case study right here, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I was just about being honest and true about everyone struggles with the same thing, that they're not alone. Nobody's alone. We always have Christ and um, open and honest. I do have something to add on to that. <clears throat> Please. Something they, something they talked <laughs> she about. She knew you did. <clears throat> she was giving the door for me. I <laughs> yes. Um, one thing you mentioned is just because you know the truth doesn't mean that the person you're talking to is ready to hear it right now. Right. So again, it's being sensitive. Like we may know how to be honest and be forthright with, we, we mm-hmm. figured out what your issue is and this is how we can help you. Uh, but if they're not in a spot right now where they're ready to hear it, they're still w- wanting to talk about the issue and get it out there. There's a fine line between, you know, pr- helping them progress and cutting up too early and just being willing right. to be sensitive to that. So. Yes, you are going to share the truth by making sure they're ready to receive it. Right. You can be right, but the point is not to be right, right? No, exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. The point is to help somebody. Right. Show and especially Christ. with kids. Yeah. When you have teenagers sitting across the desk, you can probably tell within a few minutes of after hearing their story how to help them. But if they're still angry and bitter or something, right then might not be the time to tell them that you know, anger and bitterness won't get you anywhere. <clears throat> Um, so you have to just be sensitive on how to handle that particular person. And you alluded to it earlier, but there are times we've come across where somebody comes to you, whether it's your son or daughter, or whether it's a teenager or something, and they have a what I would call respectable sin they're going to bring up. But the real issue they want to get to is, and so it's just so important to, Ask Let them yeah, ask, ask the questions <laughs> to listen, listen. right, Don? Don's a good listener, right? And um, and, and again, something not. something that uh, you know I, I've picked up is is just the idea of anything else. Is there anything else? Sure. They share this. I'm, I'm having a hard time with my devotions right now. Oh, God, let me help you with that a little bit. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Well, <laughs> you know, here's the real reason here I came. It comes. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So good stuff. Well, good. On that note, anything else? <laughs> okay. I'll speak for her. I think she's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. We'll, we'll off to a good start as far as the takeaways from the conference. And the next video uh, we'll be uh, bringing out, we'll be continuing to build on what we've talked about already.